What is up guys, welcome back. Just a quick reminder, we're still giving away the mini bike. All you gotta do is click on one of the links below, head over to the websites. For every $5 you spend is an entry into the draw and you can win that little bad boy yourself. Let's get on to the live action. Now there seems to be a lot of excitement in the air about coffee grinders at the moment. Every YouTuber is talking about them. Lance has done about 3 million videos on the Time Wars. Uh, every Instagram influencer is playing with grinders. There's a lot of stuff coming through, all the DFs and those things. Um, and I do have a Time War 78S on the way as well, which I'm very excited about. Um, and I figured before we go down the road of that guy, we should talk about the all ground because I see a lot of people asking questions. Even on every one of Lance's videos, people are asking about the all ground. Lance has apparently never used one. So I figured I think I should probably do a good little rundown on this. I've had it for about 18 months and I'm gonna give you guys my input as to what I think about this grinder. I'm gonna show you retention. I'm gonna show you guys the functions and I'm gonna give you an overall thoughts on this grinder. So let's get into it. First up, retention. Now I've done my best to get the grinder into the workshop without dropping any of that retention that's sitting in the grinder. Because typically if you sort of bang the grinder, you're gonna get a little bit of those grounds to come through. What I'm gonna do is I've got my brush I've got scales, a dosing cup, and this little guy to get out any grounds that are left inside. And I'm gonna see how much retention is in this thing. I haven't done this in probably six months. And to be honest, I've never measured it. Now the consistency of this grinder has been pretty good. Um, so if there is coffee sitting inside, it's clearly just creating a bit of a nice smooth path and then staying there for the remainder. So let's get stuck into this thing and see what comes out. So I've zeroed my scale. Uh, best way to do this is pop your dosing cup on there. Just pull out the hopper. There's nothing in there. No tools required. I am just going to give it a quick little purge. Just to see if there's anything. And then we're going to take off the burrs. No tools required again. Now I'm going to give this a brush while it's sitting over the top just to try to get anything to come through. Now the reason I put the dosing cup on in the scale is so that we can measure the retention. So now this is a what I would call a service retention rather than each grind retention because obviously this isn't coming out every time I grind. So we don't need to worry about this too much but it'll be interesting to see exactly how much comes through and then with other grinders I'll be able to do it in the future. Using a little bellow. Looking pretty good so far. There's really not much coming through. So you can see there's a little bit of that build up that we're talking about there. It kind of once it's on there, it's not coming through. So you know, for science's purpose in future, you know, you'd use this research and maybe build that into the burr so that there's nowhere for that coffee to get sat and essentially, you know, prevent that from ever happening in the next version, reiteration, etc. So all part of research. Keep that in mind, Lance. Next grinder. So this is the, the retention that's really stuck in there. Um, that until you pull the grinder apart, you just can't get in there. So we've got the dosing cup on and we're going to brush it into the chute. And hopefully that'll all come into the final weight. So after a very extensive clean, um, I have pulled out obviously the upper burrs, which doesn't hold a lot of retention at all, even though it's very simple to remove with zero tools. I have pulled out the uh, lower burr itself, which held a little bit of retention in some of the gaps and of course on those edges like I showed you. Um, but there is nothing left inside the top there. There's nothing left inside the chute. Um, that just magnetizes in as well. So no tools. You can actually do a really extensive clean on this thing, obviously without taking this guy out with the use of no tools. Um, magnets and little just clips. It pops out really, really easy. Now with all that said, all of those things removed and absolutely extensively cleaned. We've got 0.8 of a gram of coffee that have co has come out. Now there's probably a little bit of dust that's come out onto the bench, but I don't think there's enough there to say that there's any more than a gram in total, which is very impressive 
Um, I've used this grinder, like I said, for 18 months. Most days it's made hundreds, if not thousands of coffees, if I'm being completely honest. Um, overall, I'm very, very happy with this thing. The functionality of it is amazing. So I'm gonna pop it back together and give you guys a quick rundown down on how it all works because it's got a lot of really cool features. So before turning the grinder on, I would highly recommend going to the coarsest setting on the grinder, so all the way around to filter, just to get those burrs nice and far away from each other, and then turn the grinder on. Once it's on, we're just going to tap that button just to make sure that there's nothing touching, because if the burrs are touching, this is going to make a mess. We're looking good. So if you want to, turn it on. You can see as I go into the next setting there, it changes. Let's just keep going finer and just make sure nothing fouls. Perfect. So you just want to make sure that there's no zeroing out or touch um, because if there is then there's something wrong, pull it apart again, double check what you've done and put it back together. So now that the grind is back together, I'm going to show you through the functions of this thing. So first up, we're going to look at the espresso because this is what I use the grinder for the most. So you have three settings here. You have a single, a double, and then an intermittent, which of course will run as long as you're holding it. Now both the single and the double work in the same way, where you hold it, it will open up the settings and you can add or minus your time, which is obviously how long the grinder will set for. Hit OK, it's ready to go. Then you hit that button and it will run for that amount of time. You can also stop it. Now we're going to slide around to the mocha setting. Now watching as I go through the setting here, as I get to this line, the screen will actually change to the mocha setting. So not only have we, have we changed the grind setting, we've actually changed the functionality of the grinder, which is you still have adjustments quite a bit within that range. And all you need to do is you pop your dosing cup or the holster underneath it and then hold. As soon as you let go, it stops grinding. Now moving over to the filter mode, again, it'll change the function as it gets to the correct grind settings and the functionality will change. Now this time, because typically you're grinding a little bit more when you're grinding for filter, you will pop the holster that does come with it. You just want to simply tap the button and then that will grind until you tap it again. Now, like I said, I do use this grinder mostly for espresso. Um, I do have hand grinders, so I typically use those for my filter coffee at the moment. Um, now, the one thing that I would probably like to see if there is a generation two of this is maybe a little bit more adjustment, especially when you get to the espresso range as it is a stepped grinder adjustment. And I've found for some of the coffees that I'm using, especially some of the lighter stuff, it's just I can't get that right in between that I would maybe like sometimes. However, in saying that, it's never produced a bad coffee by any means. Um, I'm just trying to experiment maybe a little bit too much for a grinder of this caliber. So I must say overall, for the price of the grinder, these retail for about $1,500 odd in Australia. I don't think there's anything better than this for the money. Very high quality burrs very strong, fairly quiet, even though it has a fairly large hopper on there. That's something we can discuss if you'd like in the comments. Um, and overall, very robust, even the on and off buttons, very, they're very solid and just feels nicely built, very robust, as some people would say. Um, and the functionality, like I said, it's just very easy to use. So for espresso, filter, and everything in between, it makes a great coffee. Now, some people have pointed out that they couldn't find this color grinder on the Fiorenzato website. That's because this one isn't actually from Fiorenzato. It's actually from San Remo. And these were built to pair up with the San Remo Cube and even a little bit of the San Remo U that's starting to come through. If you'd like to check out the Cube that this matches, go and check this video out. But for now, I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a great day and happy brewing.